who has it harder, an entrepreneur or an employee, someone that works for someone else? Stay tuned, we'll talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's edition of Entrepreneur Insider. I'm your host. I'm also the founder of the Black Entrepreneurs Network, Tia Robertson. If this is your first time watching the show, thank you so much. Don't make it your last. Be sure to subscribe and share with your community because this information will be beneficial to someone you know as well as yourself. Now, in this episode, we're talking about entrepreneurship and employment. And let's keep it real. If we go back to that question I asked at the beginning, no one has it easy, right? There's always something, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're an employee. The reality is there's a myth that goes like, hey, it is really hard building somebody else's thing, so let me build my own. The reality is sometimes it's 10 times harder to build your own, especially if you don't have the resources or the connections or the information to help you do that. That's why the Entrepreneurs Black Entrepreneurs Network was founded. So be sure to check out some of our events and reach out to me for some resources that can help you with your business. But back to today's topic. I asked a question recently in our entrepreneurship in our I asked a question recently in our Facebook group, the Black Entrepreneurs Network. Now, if you're not in the group, here's a quick plug. Be sure to go and join us. It's absolutely free, no purchase, no spam. It's a great group to engage with other growth-minded prospective and existing entrepreneurs. All right, so back to the topic. I asked a question in the group about the reasons that people actually leave their job to become an entrepreneur. And of course, you hear the things that a lot of people think of, right? For more money or they don't like their boss. But there's a lot of other opportunities like there's stability. There's opportunities for growth. Sometimes you don't have to deal with that weird coworker, right? And sometimes you do what you can at your job and you're not recognized. Um, sometimes there aren't professional development opportunities. There's so many reasons that people go from being an employee to an entrepreneur. But the reality is there are a lot of entrepreneurs that really didn't put all their ducks in a row and sometimes they're not successful. Whether that's because they don't do their research, whether it's because they don't price their product or their service properly, whether they don't realize that, you know, their product and service really is doing the same thing in the market. They're not doing anything to set themselves apart, show their value proposition, show why they're unique, display their benefits, and on and on. So I'll share some of the information that we talked about in the group down below. But I wanted to create this video to get you thinking and to ask that question. Do you currently work for someone else and you want to become an entrepreneur? What's stopping you? Is it fear? Is it lack of information or something else? Are you currently an entrepreneur? There's some people that have only ever been entrepreneurs. So they've never worked a traditional J-O-B. And that is a different perspective, right? There's always, in my opinion, something to learn for a job, for learning how to deal with people, because the reality is even when you're an entrepreneur, you still have to manage your business. You still have to deal with customer service and manage invoices and pay people and make sure you're getting paid and process inventory and the list goes on. So sometimes entrepreneurship is not as easy as it sounds. So I want to know from you though, have you ever had a job? Have you only been an entrepreneur? What are some of the pros? What are some of the cons? What's something that you would do different if you could? What's something that you would take from your job and incorporate it into your business or vice versa? The other thing I want you to think about is what about those people that are entrepreneurs and for whatever reason, they go back to a job, whether they end their business or they just transition 
they still have their business, but they're working a part-time job or even a full-time job while operating their business. There are a ton of benefits of doing that, including income stability and expanding your network. There's so many people that meet referrals and leads at their job that, you know, can help them in their business. Is that you? I want to know that as well. And if you were an entrepreneur and you took a job, tell us why, right? Did you do it because you needed medical benefits? <laughs> Did you do it because, you know, you got tired of working alone and you wanted to be around other people? There's so many reasons. And I created this video to let people know there isn't just one way. It is perfectly fine. People that work a job get shamed a lot of times. There is no shame in working a job because you are not just helping build someone's business. You are obtaining skills. You are becoming organized. You are learning to be a member of a team. A lot of times you're learning some new software and equipment that you may not learn on your own. And of course, there's always a lot of benefits to entrepreneurship. You can build a legacy for your family and become financially independent if you do it well enough. You can make an impact outside of just your job. So I kind of feel like I rambled enough. You get the gist. What I want you to do is stay tuned and watch this video. In a recent virtual networking event, hosted by the Black Entrepreneurs Network, I posed some of these questions to our entrepreneurs of color that were in attendance. Stay tuned and you'll be able to hear their honest feedback about entrepreneurship and employment, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. Now raise your hand uh, if you've ever worked a traditional JLB, and it could be like when you were 16 or like last week or at the same time you're on the business. Everybody, Cardell, what about you? I think you're the only hand I didn't see. Yeah. Okay. I want this to be a, you know, open conversation. I want to get your thoughts. Like, what do you think about being an employee versus being an entrepreneur, right? Are there pros or cons? Are there struggles? Do you have a preference? Go ahead. Andre said, I got this. Go ahead. You are welcome to start. So I have really have something to say for this. And when I logged in for church, they talked about this too. Okay. Hmm. Now I worked a regular job for many, many years. Okay. But by the age of six, because my father, he had his own business. We went to free markets. We went to craft shows. Okay. So we done. Um, okay. But he always taught me when you work for somebody, do a good job, do a great job and be a great employee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because everybody want to give a big excuse why they don't do a great job at their job. And, but then when they start a business, they don't know how to be a good boss, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to service their customers more because of the attitude that they had when they was working their job. And that stuff carry over. It carries over. So when you have a job, more people, I know a lot of people now is complaining they don't get paid enough. What job really ever paid enough, okay? Mm -hmm. So just make some money. Do your job, do a great job, turn, go to work, be there on time and do more. That will carry over to your business until your business starts making at least as much money as your regular job does. Then you can trans over full time to your own business, but use a job as a stepping stone, learn from it and do your best when you're doing that position. So I just had to share that because everybody talks bad about jobs and there's nothing wrong with a job, you know, mm -hmm. but if you want more, you want more. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Good. I totally agree with what Andre said. Um, be the best that you can be on your job. Like you said, be on time. Uh, go above and beyond. And um, you, you will find out that when you do all those things, you'll find it self-rewarding. So for example, I find my job very self-rewarding. I'm a um, certified nurse assistant, and I work in a retirement community. And I, I, I don't treat my job as a job. I treat it as a mission. 
Huh? I like that. I can agree to that. I talk to like business owners every day. And so like, I usually would try to like pick up something. Cause like, I noticed like with a lot of, since I work from home, a lot of my like, uh, dude, what? Sorry, give me one second. <laughs> no problem. All right. <laughs> so while Jabari is put us on a, um, a commercial break, um, <laughs> Is there anything from, so I'm kind of just throwing this out there again for the rest of you. Is there anything from your job that you use in your business or vice versa? Something from your job that you're like, oh my God, I would never incorporate that into my business. Um, Jamar, are you back? Yes. I'm so oh, okay. sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Brother just walked into the room, just butt naked. Just, I was just like, what are you oh, yeah, here? Trust me, I totally understand. I have a little person over here. <laughs> Um, I will say because of the fact that like I work from home and what I've noticed is that a lot of my other like coworkers, they don't really care usually about the job, but I actually use this job as a huge benefit because of the fact that I'm talking to business owners day to day. And I usually, I'm always asking them, Hey, what did you like? What do you do? Like, how do you do it? Um, why do you do it? Of course. And then like, how did you get your first customer? Do you run ads? You know, like little things like that on how they actually run their business. And then I'll, I'll apply those things that I learned from them to my own. So I try to always see it as a benefit. Yeah, definitely. Great strategy. Again, and relationship building. I mean, that's like some of the easiest relationships to transition over, you know, to your business. Yeah. On set for the fact that there's a non-compete rule. So yeah it's it's unfortunate because i've had like some people that are like hey like you know we we actually could use a little hand on this and i'm like ah there's no non-compete rule <laughs> yeah okay. anybody else anything else that... go, oh go ahead what the question what was the question again so pros and cons of being an employee versus an entrepreneur, anything that you might have taken from your job that you use in your business, something that you're like, I would never do for my job in my business, like anything like that. Just thoughts on. And so the reason, just so you all know, like why this came up is because, you know, I come across just through daily conversation, a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs, right? And there are some people that run their business, like they own a business and they run it as if, they're an employee, like they're waiting for other people to make the decisions for them. And I'm like, dude, this is your business. You got to find an accountant or you got to put this process in place. You have to find like resources. And then there's some people that are just like, you know, kind of like what Andre said, I'm going to, you know, work my job. I'm going to pay my bills off of that and then build my business. So I know there's a lot of different perspectives. So that's why I just wanted to kind of open it up and kind of see do some of you. And then let's keep it real. There's certain times as an entrepreneur and not with the Black Entrepreneurs Network, but with like my virtual assistant business. Well, I'm not going to lie where I get tired of people not paying their invoices, not doing what they're supposed to do. And I'm like, to go back and get a job and quit this whole you know entrepreneurship thing because it's a pain in the butt like I, no one ever talks about entrepreneurship is not always fine right everyone always like yeah you can make all this money and i have all these packages on my floor with the pink so thing wrapping yeah sorry y'all know i got issues with the lipstick and people but anyway so yeah so sometimes you know it's okay to say like hey i'm i'm gonna stick with my job or so um the e myth. Okay, perfect. All right, no problem. Oh, yeah, kids. Oh, nice meeting you too. Hopefully, we'll see you back again. Yeah, I <laughs> have to go. Coming. So sorry. It's really nice yeah. meeting all of y'all. Hope to see you all again. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Bye. Um, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so that was a question just to kind of get your feedback. I think um, a lot of people, they, they leave their jobs because they want freedom. Mm-hmm. But being an entrepreneur, you kind of have less freedom. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. And yeah, you do have to just dis- make decisions for yourself. Like I was in the military for 11 years. I didn't have to think about anything. Like I, did, I, I was always told what to do, when to eat, when to, you know, oh, you're going underway. Oh, you're coming back. You know, so it was, it's been a really interesting transition to, 
be your own boss and actually take initiative for yourself because yeah, you're not as free as you think you are when you leave your job. Anybody else? I was just going to say that um, I was kind of thrown into entrepreneurship, but um, I was really glad I could, after working for so many years, I just felt like I, I just want to give myself permission. I don't want to ask for permission. So that, you know, opened up so many doors for me to be able to be myself. So, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, yes, there are struggles, but I felt like when I was on my job, I did the outstanding job all the time. I never really had a lot of complaints, but, um, I just carry that over to my business. Like if I can work that hard for somebody else, I'm going to darn sure work that hard for myself and, you know, keep this. So uh, the thought of, and I'm probably one of the older people in the group, the thought of me going back to a job at this age is not happening. <laughs> it just can't. <laughs> I'm almost ready to retire from my own business. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to start over. I totally get you. No. <laughs> totally, totally. All right. Well, um, anybody else really quick before we wrap up? I'll go. Okay. So the one thing that I carry from not only the, the most recent job I've had, but from all of them are the experiences and the skills that I've learned along the way. Mm -hmm. Because one of the biggest and greatest lessons that I got is to learn to love the process when you're gaining something new. Mm -hmm. So many people go through life and they absolutely abhor the process, but they love the reward. And it's something that I say very frequently. I'm going to remember the what I'm going to remember the worth and the value of water when my well isn't empty. Mm. I don't despite hardship because that's exactly how my muscle and my endurance are made. And mm. I, have a, I have another way of seeing this. Instead, I see pain as a teacher. And the, what I gain from sitting through its lesson is experience. And to that tune, because pain is a teacher, I never ask, why is something happening to me? I always ask, why is this, ha why is this happening? And what is it here to teach me? I like that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Okay, so I'm Real telling you right too. now, you said a couple of things, quotes that I'm, I'll, I'll give you credit, but I'm going to use a couple of those quotes that you said. Um, <laughs> go ahead, Andre. So uh, just real quick, a lot of people don't talk about this, but nobody likes the, nobody likes the process, right? When, when we want something, we want to get to the end, but nobody likes the process. The thing is, most people don't have a true vision of what they're going to accomplish. An example, who likes changing diapers? Nobody okay, likes changing you. diapers. Sorry. But because we know the end result, if we don't change the diaper, the baby is going to cry, it's going to get a rash, it's going to get sick, right? So mm -hmm. we smile when we get peed on, right? When it's stinky and everything, we, with happiness, we change that diaper because we know the end result. If you can change your mindset and believe in the end result, you will happily go through the process no matter how bad it is. Yeah. All right. I will not be quoting you with the P and I because I didn't <laughs> like getting peed on. But I, I like the message. Like overall, mindset is very valuable and important. We'll, we'll stick to it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, bye, Natalia. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry. <laughs> all right. So thank you all so much for your input. 
Hey, tell me down below in the comments what you thought of this episode. Are you balancing employment with entrepreneurship? Did you leave your full-time job to become a full-time entrepreneur? Have you gone from entrepreneurship back to being a full-time employee or, you know, something else? Be sure to tell me your story down below. You may be featured in the upcoming episode. Speaking of new episodes, we're always looking for entrepreneurs of color to feature. We want to interview you. We want to let the world know about you, your business, and the benefits that you offer. So if you want to be featured, be sure to email me or let me know down below in the comments. Now, if you'd like to sponsor an upcoming episode, you can contact me as well. All emails can be directed to info at the Black Entrepreneurs Network dot com. I can't wait to hear from you all. Now, as always, the show is brought to you in partnership with Relationship Entertainment Television. They have a full line of positive and engaging entertainment television for people of color, but really it's for everyone. So be sure to like, subscribe and share the information about this platform. You can find them at re-tv.net, streaming 24-7, and now they're on Roku. If you haven't downloaded their app, be sure to do so today. Now, new episodes of Entrepreneur Insider are featured and premiere every Thursday at 6 p.m. right here on RETV. So be sure to watch and to share with your community. The more viewers, the better. I look forward to seeing you next week. And until then, be great. Peace. And Nicole with your weekly RATV news break. Each Thursday at 12 noon Eastern, we'll come to you with the latest news, trends, and more with a positive spin. We know there's a lot of positive news that doesn't get reported, but we want to give you the opportunity to share your story here on RATV. If you have a positive news story you want us to share, you can submit your story to news at re-tv.net. Don't forget to subscribe to the Relationship Entertainment Television YouTube channel. Download the new RATV Live app on your mobile device and follow Relationship Entertainment Television on your favorite social media platform. Don't forget, make sure you tune in to the RATV News Break each Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Until, Until then, then, be blessed and be great. is Demita Joe. Each Wednesday, you can find me here at 3 p.m. I'll be over here discussing different things that are going on and try to bring you a boost of positivity for your week because we all need this. We're going to share some feel-good stories. We might find a hometown hero. We may take a look at some trending topics and sometimes we might even find a lesson in a not so warm and fuzzy story if we can. I'm Demita Joe, and I'll see you guys on the next episode right here on What's Going On?
Hey, it's your girl, Tia Robertson. I'm the host of Entrepreneur Insider. Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern for entrepreneurs and news that you need to know about. See you there.